starts back in 1982. <laughs> um, I was watching World of Sport pro wrestling and I watched it and obviously as a as a kid you don't know it's um it's predetermined and that's all I wanted to do with my life. I just thought I want to do that. And that led on to I started amateur wrestling. It's the same wrestling what they do in the Olympics in nineteen ninety one and um, basically they didn't used to train kids in freestyle in Kirby in the in the sports centre. Um, but what they allowed me to do is basically be the bodyguard for a class and keep kids out. <laughs> Eventually they let me train and because I've been watching that long, I knew all the moves and um, I'd done freestyle wrestling for eight years. And um, I lost me, I think I lost my first comp, but then I won every other comp after that. But um, yeah, I just thought that would lead to pro wrestling. And, but it didn't. It didn't lead to uh, pro wrestling because the two different sports. Yeah. But freestyle wrestling, it's a legit Olympic sport. Got pro wrestling, which is um, a pre -tainment. it's it's entertainment, isn't it? So um, I think it was around 2001 I became a dad for the first time. I was a little bit in limbo, and it was a guy uh, called Mark Wilson. I was training, um, doing his Muay Thai class, and Valley Tudo had just kicked in this new form of fighting, which became MMA and cage fighting. So Valley Tudo is the same as MMA, but in a ring, but a little, just a little bit more violent. Some of yeah. the fights, uh, they weren't really weight limits. They weren't. They weren't they always had didn't really always have gloves either. Yeah. But um, I think at the time I had a three hundred pound debt. I thought my life was over. <laughs> I was only a young lad then, but um, they offered me two hundred pound for the fight, so it's okay. Yeah. That's how it started. And then it all went from. Isn't that mad? Yeah. The way it just all went from there. So do you think when like, you watched it on the telly all them years ago, mm. you were just instantly like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, it was, it's, um, I've always... What was it though? What 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 was that? Like, I want to do this. Was there a certain fighter? Was there a certain, like, programme? What was it that made you want to do it, it? It's funny that you just mentioned that because the, 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 the first match I ever watched was, there was this guy, didn't even realise who the good guy was, but the bad guy was called Skull Murphy. Right. And That's a name just, you don't forget, isn't it? Definitely. And it just absolutely, from that moment, because it was injustice, I've always had a, like, a high sense of justice. Right. And this guy was cheating. I was only two, bear in mind. And you spotted it? I was like, this is right. I said, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, when I'm an adult, I'm going to, I'm going to batter him. That, 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 that was literally, that was the first motivation. I mean, over time, things change and the motivation changes and, yeah. and stuff. But yeah, that was the, that was the first bit of fuel. It was anger at this bad guy cheating. Yeah. And I just wanted to get back at, back at him. And do you know what? If ever meet him. <laughs> I don't know. But, Watch out. Yeah, yeah. Skull me. Yeah. How did your family react and how did they you know take it when you were like i want to go into fighting and i want to do all i want my life to go mm. go that way you know because how did your mum and your parents find that well just they, they were so used to it from a young age because even when i was playing back here the, the toys i don't want to lose you on this but there was a, a series master of the universe i still love it now and all my he-man figures and they were always fighting and then i watched wrestling then i used to make them all wrestle and it was just it's just been a theme since that young age, so they were used to it. So every time I'd done something, though, it was the same reaction. Though it was like, "What do you want to do now? I want to go and be wrestling." And it, it's just, it's nothing to do with it. It's like a, a certain mentality that in Liverpool, yeah. with regards to kids have big dreams. And you, you don't get, you may get getting shot down, but people go, oh, "Yeah, okay, whatever." Pipe dream. Yeah, it's, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And it's funny because now they've like. Stop the fight, I'm actually doing pro wrestling now. <laughs> so it's everything I've wanted to do, I've actually done. But again, that's not about money or an adulation. I mean, I'm on the show, so there you go. There's a highlight. Thank you. But, Drink yes. to them, cheers. But um, yeah, it was never about money. And I, I, I haven't lost that. I used to call it Saturday morning magic, because that's what you used to look forward to when you was a kid. It was yeah. Saturday morning, so that's the only time. It's like now you can binge watch anything yeah it wasn't the internet back then it was just saturday morning that's when you get to watch 
me one program of Masters of the Universe or something like Mask or some, some cartoon or one show of wrestling. You're only half an hour long each. And I've kept that magic, that dream and that, that motivation and I've kept it. And that's what I call it, Saturday morning magic. So. How do you feel? How do you, when you hear the titles like world champion, mm -hmm. two time world champion, mm -hmm. how, how do you react to these when people, you hear these titles about yourself? Well, I, was, I was okay until you mentioned it then, <laughs> like, I got a bit goosebumpy then. <laughs> It was just, and it, it's it's weird as well because I'd like I'd won titles leading up to it, yeah. Because I already had a goal, and like I said, it changed a lot because I was training in. Um, I'd, I'd won an English title in my third fight um, in the Valley Two. Though I was in the ring, and then I ended up getting uh, offered a fight on it in an actual cage. My fourth fight was in in a cage, and like back then it was just I got offered a grand for a thousand pounds, so I just took that. I just I was wanted, and that was all that money was always up. To spoil my kids, that was that all that yeah. was for. It wasn't for anything else, but I still wanted to be. I mean, during the fighting side, I just wanted to be the best legitimate grappler in the world. Yeah. So that was basically going back to my original motivation. And then I didn't really sink in until like after, because it was 2011 when I won, like my own weight and an open weight. Um, wow. But it didn't really sink in until like I rang like my eldest son and told him because he had an issue in school one time because. Once I was when I was on the Ultimate Fighter, I got given. I was on a top Trumps card, so they released like limited edition. Top oh Trumps. my God! Yeah, well, I've still got a few now, <laughs> but I, I had Brilliant. that, and I went, look, Brandon, I just I signed him, and just keep that forever. But he took him to school when he was um, obviously like, this is my dad, and because like I'd, I've always, always had like good shaped pecs, um, <laughs> and because I had pecs on, I remember one of the kids saying, your dad's, nah, that's not that. Your dad's got boobs. And he went, they're pectorals. <laughs> and then, Shut you down. You know, and then he, but then the kid went, but is he a world champion? He, because of wins, I'd never tell him to lie. So he went, well, no. But after I won them world titles, it was in November in 2011, the first thing I was on was rang him and Brandon. Remember when a kid asked you if I was a world champion? He said, yeah. I said, well, next time he asks, say, yeah, he is. He is two time world champion. So we, that she was the only fun. time, yeah. She is. <laughs> but again, it was just you saying it at that, that time, and you saying it then. It, but sometimes you don't realise it about yourself and it's so easy to forget, isn't it? And walk around with this in your head, like clumsy your mind, I've done this, I've achieved this. It's mm. the way sometimes in life you do forget stuff, don't you? Yeah. You do, and you do, you lose a bit of confidence yeah. and you lose a bit of, you know, aspiration to what you've done. But it, it's always there, it's always these accolades are always set in stone, they're never yeah. ever gonna disappear. Ultimate fighter, we've gotta talk about that. Okay. How was that experience? It was good, it was just um and it's weird because I had like a certain outlook on what fighting was about and what the behind the scenes was like. And I was like, I think it's this. And people saying to me, no, it's not, no, it's not, it's like this. And they think, because that was their dream, it wasn't so much mine. And they, um, it just, I found out though during the time my, my outlook was right about it. Um, to, and like, in all honesty, um, a lot of people adhere to like meeting Dana White and going to the UFC, but I never liked his character. Right. From day one, I was always open about that. And when I met him, it was like, it was like four, four or five different occasions I've spoke to him, and he is a he's a nasty person, and I'm not like one to normally help someone just if I just don't like them because that's yeah. not right. Yeah. But this one's a nasty person. And it's um, in your face, and yeah, it's, the, it's yeah, just, um, absolutely. He's just he's not a, he's just not he's not a nice person. But anyway, um, was, did you think that the reality side to it yeah. and that the pantomime side to yeah. it, it was just not you? Yeah, it was just, it, it, it's, it's a good analogy. Um, very observant as well, because it wasn't how, it's it's weird watching it. Yeah. I mean, at the time, I was really ill. I had a heavy staph infection. Um, during my first fight, I had no skin on the bottom of my foot, <laughs> right. just from overtraining, because I had to cut like nine kilo in one week, which is, um, I should be running Weight Watchers, because I've done nine kilo <laughs> in one week. Um, but the, um, the, I got an infection through that in my foot when I went to America. Oh so I had a gosh. month of good training and then I had a month of being really ill. Yeah. And, um, and that affects your mind as well, doesn't it? Like yeah. your thoughts and stuff and how yeah. you felt about but the process. Because the pain, they were giving me Vicodin, which is a heavy painkiller. So I was, I was like, basically I was just like smashed out of my head anyway. Yeah. But, it, it, but I still remember enough. I had enough uh, cognitive um, ability about me to uh, soak up the environment. And it was good. I met really lovely people there. Yeah. The lads were there. And the American kids who were there, um, we're like really trying to be like we're going to cause a rivalry and that but it, 
it lasted about a week and they just thought, oh, everyone's cool in And everyone got on and there was no drama. So what, how do you make it on the, the show? Even the, the, the order of the fights was wrong and on the TV and some of the things, some of the things that happened, they put in the wrong order. I understand how to make, make a show. Yeah. But they should, be, they should call it semi-reality. Or yeah. something like that because it's not. Because you've got to come out as a TV. caricature, yeah. haven't you, of yourself? And well, to be honest, it didn't really motivate any of that. I think they picked some of us based on that. Yeah. You know, when you look back at your career, like mm. today, what what have been your highlights of just even, like, you know, when you haven't been fighting? Mm. What have you know, what people you've worked with, mm. associated with? Mm. Who, what have you, when you think about it, like, you think, oh my God, like, I'm proud of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, mm. like, I'm proud of what I've mm. done. Who have you loved to work with? And you think, yeah. Oh, it, this sneers loads, and someone's going to get a bit. Um, I've got, I've got my P's and Q's. It's be a bit <laughs> no, pissed off. we're in the pub. <laughs> right, it's going to be pissed off. Some people will be pissed off, but um, a funny highlight was when I met um, when Rampage Jackson, who played Mr. T in the 18 movie. Right, he came cool. training with us, and at the time, the Wolf Slayer started taking in loads of UFC fighters. Right. So, but they were all like heavyweights, and we t- took them all in, so it really expanded. Like I said, I loved the training. I didn't really, at the time as well, I didn't really want to be a professional fighter. I was just taking. I'd fight, I just wanted to be the best grappler. But it was the times in the gyms were absolutely, um, it was just fantastic. So um, it was like the tricks, it's like people reacting to jokes. It's nice when people laugh at jokes, but I like it when people react bad to a joke um, <laughs> and get really, um, really peed off. So the, um, he'd just been in the A team, and supposedly, I'm not too sure, it was a bit of a bomb. So um, <laughs> I was getting sponsors at the time. I was getting like, I think it's like 1,500 quid a month right. off a sponsor. I was getting um, 50 pound three nights a week to spar Bisping for five rounds. And I was doing two classes as well, again, 50 pounds each. So I can live on that. It's a king's ransom for me, that. Cause I, didn't, I didn't go out drinking, didn't, I, I'm not, don't use drugs, still don't. Yeah. Even that's like um, a bit heavy for me. I'll be still, I'll be <laughs> getting hit for drunk and disorderly <laughs> after that. But, um, yeah, we went to those uh, pound stretcher that had all the 18 figures, but they had loads of Mr. T. Stop it. Yeah, so I bought eight of them. And all the main fights and thing. his name's Quinton Jackson. That's his real name, Quinton. No one ever calls him Quinton. Everyone calls him Rampage. So I wrote on the boxes, from Quinton to, I wrote one to Bisping, from Quinton to, there's another wrestler called Zach Light, and the two Kelly brothers, well, from Quinton to Paul Kelly, Gary Kelly. Little shout out there. Um, I put them in all the bags and they were all confused. They were opening the training bag and like, ah, um, what's this? And I thought, you must. And he's going, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and he got so pissed off. Oh my God. He was like, because literally, he's like, again, when you're in a gym, all racial discrepancies go out the window. No one cares. You can literally say what you want. I'm not going to repeat some of the things that were said. But no one cares because it's reality. That's reality. In a gym, when you were training with mates, people you punch and kick and, and choke day in, day out. None of that matters. I think in re- I think people in life have got to le- could learn something from that. No one cares about stuff like that. So you could say absolute Anything. like things that'd be terrible, but he'd laugh them off. Yeah. But again, if he insulted his looks, he said he was, I said something about him being ugly on something, and he fumed. And then that also because he felt daft because he was like, it wasn't me. I didn't send you them things. I was like, <laughs> he's like, who was it? And I'm just laughing. Everyone knew it was me. So it was like, what a tale I, yeah, I've met, it's just uh, yeah, I've met loads of people, but I just I always go back to that one because yeah. it's just. Uh, what was the time in your career, Dave, when you thought enough's enough now? Enough is uh, was there ever was it that certain fight? Was it that certain event when you thought I'm gonna cliche throw the towel in? Do you know what I mean? What was but that? Was your point? Well, ask me down five years because still get offered stuff, and still no, like know, four, two years ago as well. Like just yeah, had a fight yeah, yeah. for someone, so it's not really it's like over. Because like I said, I didn't batter my body. I didn't, I didn't do it like like the way people do and focus the life on it. Yeah, the honesty is there though, and you've been yeah. very honest throughout yeah. your career. So after what we're going through, you know, there is opportunity for more fights on the table yeah. and more yeah. events. Just watch this space then, isn't it? Yeah. Dave, yeah. thank you so much. Drinks with MJ here yeah. are on Point Liverpool. How do you find it? Spot on. Very relaxed. Excellent. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs>